Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this service. I'm Reverend Sue Lynn Milne, and you're joining us at St. Peter's Church in Comox for our Advent 2 service. Warm welcome to all of you there who are joining us. And now I'm going to hand over to the guys from Larch who are going to bring us um, an Advent liturgy and light the Advent candles. Isaiah told of the birth of God's Son. Prepare the way of the Lord. Gabriel spoke to Mary. Prepare the way of the Lord. Joseph changed his mind. Prepare the way of the Lord. The Son of God Most High is coming. Prepare the way of the Lord. We must prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. we light the second advent candle. Lord, teach us to have patience during the times in our lives when we are preparing. Help us to remember that Mary and Joseph willingly prepared for the birth of Jesus. God, today we remember those who serve in missions in Central America countries and the children of those missionary families. Bless them especially. Amen. So let's begin our worship. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Some words taken from Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, cry aloud to God to hear me. In the day of my distress, I sought the Lord. My hands were raised at night without ceasing. My soul refused to be consoled. I remembered my God and I groaned. I pondered and my spirit fainted. You withheld sleep from my eyes. I was troubled, I could not speak. I thought of the days of long ago and remembered the years long past. At night I mused within my heart. I pondered and my spirit questioned. Will the Lord reject us forever and no longer show favour to us? Has God's love vanished forever? Has God's promise come to an end? Does God forget to be gracious or in anger withhold compassion? I said, this is what causes my grief, that the way of the Most High has changed. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember your wonders of old. I muse on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You showed your power among the peoples. Your strong arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and of Joseph. You guided your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. You are the God who works wonders among the nations. So let's pray. In our distress, O God, we forget your divine providence and begin to brood and question. Help us to recall your mighty acts and to rejoice again in your love for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for our reading for today, I'm going to read to you the whole of Matthew chapter 1, because as you probably gathered from our Advent litany with Larch at the beginning, um, our theme for this week is Joseph, the father of Jesus. So Matthew chapter 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Am Aminadab, Am Aminadab the father of Na Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. 
Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Zehoram. Zehoram, the father of Uzziah. <laughs> Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hez Hezekiel, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Ammon, Ammon, the father of Josiah, Josiah, the father of Jeco Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon, after the exile to Babylon. Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abihud, Abihud, the father of Eliakim. Are you still with me? I hope so. Eliakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Akim, Akim, the father of Elihud, Elihud, the father of Eleazar, Eleazar, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, getting there, and the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. To continue, thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, saw her, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he did give him the name Jesus. Here ends the reading. Now, I know the, um, the genealogy. I do notice how f difficult it was for me to pronounce that. <laughs> but it is important, and I believe that... Um, our Lady's Bible study is looking at that genealogy, um, but I'll mention that again in a moment. So let's pray. Lord, may the words that I speak reflect your written word of scripture and lead us to him who is the living word, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm just starting with an image here that you can see now. This is an image. I, I took this photograph myself. I went down to St. Joe's Hospital in Comox, where they have this statue of St. Joseph holding a young infant, Jesus. Um, and I think that's just a, a lovely image of him there. Now, last week we were looking at Mary and we were thinking about how fitting it was that she became the mother of of Christ, we looked at those images of her being a bridge or a portal and how much she knew about um, the Old Testament scriptures and how that made her a really good parent to bring up Jesus. So this week it's Joseph's turn. And I could say an awful lot about what made Joseph a really good person to be um, Jesus's father. Um, and actually Joseph, even though he is so important, such an important character, he is only mentioned in two of the Gospels, and that is Matthew and Luke. Now, I just read to you um, the first chapter of Matthew, the whole chapter. Um, and when I reread it for this sermon, I realised how Joseph-centric that whole thing is. It's all about 
Joseph. Um, now the, you've got some homework of that, so read it again to yourself when you get home or after this, well, you're already at home probably, but after this service. And think about how Joseph-centric that is. Because that whole genealogy leading down actually shows that Joseph is in the line of David. Um, and that Jesus isn't in that line by blood or by genetics because it comes through his father Joseph's line. He's in the line of David by acceptance. So think about it. Joseph had to give his yes to God as much as Mary did. And as soon as he gave that yes to God in the response to the, the words of the angel, as soon as, as soon as Mary gave her yes in response to the words of the angel, Jesus was conceived in her womb. He entered her womb to put on flesh through her flesh. But when Joseph said his yes to the angel, Jesus entered the line of David. He became, in, in, he became one of the line of David. You might remember back to last week, we had Jeremiah, a reading from Jeremiah, which said, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. And that was Jesus. Now, if you do take a look now at actual Matthew uh, chapter 2 and Luke 2, something else might strike you if you look at them side by side. Then Matthew, Joseph is warned in a dream um, to take Jesus away because Jesus was under threat from Herod. And because of that, he undertakes this long journey into Egypt. Now, if you think about it now, we've got Joseph and Mary, they've already left Nazareth and gone to Bethlehem. Um, but then Jesus, uh, Joseph takes Jesus and Mary to Egypt, um, and then they finally go back to Israel, and then from there back to Galilee, to Nazareth. Whereas Luke simply says that after the ceremony of purification and uh, Jesus is presented at the temple, that they just go back to Nazareth. That he doesn't mention that whole journey. So what do we make of that? these two different accounts of what happened around and after the time of Jesus' birth. Well, it's not as odd as it may seem, um, as each of the Gospels, they differ in many ways. Now, each author of the Gospels records what was important for them and for their community in their context. And Matthew was writing for a Jewish audience. Now, for them, it was important to record that Jesus was born in Bethlehem because that was a fulfillment of scripture. Um, Matthew actually quotes Micah, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd the people Israel. So this is why it's so important that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It was important to his audience to record that escape into Egypt, that Jesus spent time there and returned because it reflected that journey of this Jewish people whose escape from Egypt was so important to them that it was and is commemorated every year during the festival of Passover. And this was for them keeping that idea of freedom alive. So ironically, um, this place, Egypt, that the Jews had escaped from in the past had actually become a place where many people from the Holy Land escaped too, just as Joseph and Jesus and Mary did. Um, so it was Egypt at this time was a country with a sizable Jewish population. So it became an obvious place of refuge as it wasn't so far away from the Holy Land anyway. Um, so it became a good place of refuge from anybody that felt they had to flee from there. They would go to Egypt. So the angel sending Joseph there wasn't so extraordinary given the times. But it got me thinking. I think we've maybe if we have missed something. Now we often talk about the, the, the nativity narratives that right from the start, right as soon as Jesus is born, we see the ordinary people, the local people being drawn to Jesus, the shepherds. And right from the start, we see the kings, the magi, the wise men, Gentiles from afar being drawn to Jesus. Um, but we also see Jesus here being drawn out so, so that Jesus encounters the, the poor local people. He encounters the, the wealthy, the rich, the important people from afar. But he also encounters the diaspora, the Jewish people who are spread to other parts of the land. He is also um, 
uh, he's among the, the exiles there, the refugees, those outside, those on the edge, right from the start. And of course, when they, Joseph brought Mary and Jesus back, um, the return to Israel was a re-entering into the heart of the promised land, the Jewish lands, though, um, and then settling in Nazareth, which was a pretty rough town on the margins. Um, all these things fulfilled scripture. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. It's all there. It's all there. The whole story fulfills the expectations of the coming Messiah. All of these things served a purpose in the unfolding of God's plan. So it was Joseph that led them on this journey. It was about Joseph and his listening to the angel. In fact, I suppose, thinking about it now, Mary, the angel came to Mary the one time and she was obedient, but the angel came to Joseph many times and he was obedient, even though it meant such upheaval and putting his faith and his trust in those words that had come from God. It's extraordinary. So when you heard that litany just now with, with the Joseph litany that we did with the guys from Larch, with his Paul, Corey and Gary down there, um, the response, you might have noticed actually and wondered about that response, prepare the way of the Lord, which would no, we would more normally associate that, prepare the way of the Lord with John the Baptist, wouldn't we? Rather than Joseph. And I wondered about it too, because I didn't write that, I just picked that, lit that litany up somewhere. But I wondered about that, and now I come to think of it, isn't that exactly what Joseph was doing? Preparing the way of the Lord, long before John the Baptist did it, by saying yes, by adopting Jesus into the line of David, by taking him into Egypt and back out and back to Naz Nazareth. Wasn't he preparing the way for the Lord? Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to uh, continue with a poem. You'll be seeing an icon there of Joseph with a, a young infant, Jesus in his arms. And I just want you to look at that and contemplate while I read to you this poem, which was written by Lisa Debney. So I'll just begin with a moment of quiet while you gaze upon that image. Here I stand, holding the tiny warm weight of God in my hands. Such a tiny weight to lift the, hu the huge weight of the world. Here I stand, the proud father, not me. I have been utterly humbled by your arrival. You're not my offspring, not part of me, and yet, at the same time, already inextricably part of my life. I was your hasty midwife who delivered you with unskilled, trembling hands, who pulled you from your haven into this, the place which is more accustomed to witnessing the first uncertain breaths of calves and lambs than the first uncertain breaths of a Messiah. Here I stand with your weight both small and immense resting on me. So maybe I am proud, proud of the privilege, proud of being your father just for the present. And I pray, little Lord, that just as I delivered you, you will in return one day deliver me. And we continue with the Canticle of the Church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty abounded, 
your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us to glory everlasting. So, Lord, we do pray that you come. We wait for you this Advent season. We can't wait for you this Advent season, as Christmas will approach and your birth will approach, that we will celebrate again. So, Lord, we bring to you, as we wait, our church, our own church here in Comox and Peter's Church, Lord, we thank you that you are among us, that your spirit moves within us, and we pray that you clarify to us that journey that you wish us to take from now on as we move in and beyond COVID. Lord, we thank you for all those people who um, are part of our church family who make worship happen in this place, the readers, the prayers, the greeters. We thank you for them. Lord, we thank you too for all those who volunteer here in whatever capacity, whether they're people who help with Bridging the Gap or the Blessings Boutique or have been organising the auction or the myriad of other things that you've called us to in this place. Lord, without them, we couldn't serve you the way that you, you, wish, that we, that you wish us to. And we pray that we hear your voice with such clarity that we cannot doubt what it is that you wish us to do here. We pray too for Bishop Anna, for her leadership over this diocese. We give thanks for her uh, guidance and those priorities she's announced recently, which help us too here, Lord, to live out your kingdom requirements. We pray too for all the other churches, the church leaders in this valley, some of whom are rejoicing, some of whom are struggling, all of whom love you, Lord. So we pray your blessing and your consolation and your power over all of those church leaders in this place, that they can lead your people closer to you as we all wait together for your coming. Pray also for the worldwide church, particularly for the Diocese of Bukavu and the DRC, and for Bishop Bahati in that place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we wait for your coming as we think about all of those place, people and places in our community who don't know you. We pray for people who work here, live here, play here. We pray for that season of waiting that not only are they thinking about the gifts and the parties and the people that they may visit, but that they also think a little bit about what the story is. <laughs> what the story is that has led this celebration to happen. The coming of you and your birth into the world, Lord. We pray that this uh, church will be a beacon to those people who are wondering and questioning in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray to you for all who are sick or suffering at this time, when the nights are long and the days are short. We pray for those who watch and wait. We pray for those who are waiting for diagnoses, that the light appears at the end of that process. We pray too for those who have already got their diagnoses, who, for whom times may be feeling a bit dark. We pray that your light is apparent in their lives and your balm and your peace is upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, Lord, and as, as we wait, 
and watch and anticipate. Help us also to fully engage in this story that's unfolding, the story of your coming and your birth. And Lord, as we are thinking of Joseph this week, also let's take a moment to think about and pray for our fathers and our father figures, to remember those who are no longer on this earth, to remember those who are still with us, and to think about all of those to whom we could be fathers, who we could perform that role of nurture and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we're in that period of Advent waiting, let's just wait upon the Lord just for a few minutes. Just wait upon him and listen to see what he may be trying to say to us this morning. So let us pray in silence. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a prayer to close. Immortal, holy and living God, fill your church with life, the church that puts its trust in the power of your name. Rescue us from our distress and teach us to acknowledge you with a willing heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to do the beginning of that again because I really like that prayer. A mortal, holy and living God, fill your church with life. Yes, the church that puts its trust in the power of your name. Amen, amen, amen. So <laughs> to send you off with a blessing, may the Lord direct our hearts to the love of God and the patience of Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and those that you love now and always. Amen. Yes, Lord, put some life in the church. So today, go forth, enjoy yourself, be safe this week, and walk out in the name of Christ. Okay, bye for now. See you next time. See you on Advent 3. Check it out. <laughs>